Hello everybody, Toad Bean here and I'll be doing a playthrough of Planetaris. Well, retrying because my last one didn't go well. <laughs> Planetaris. The story of the ocean of stars. Draw a beautiful sparkle of the gods. Daughter of Isma? Oh boy. Starting off strong. Mabel Station Spyro. Carelessly, in other words, a remarkable corner of deep space. I was waiting for my flight number to be called. I tapped my finger against my knees, eager to be on my way. I re rehearsed the ritual countless number of times before. Maple Station was hardly remarkable as far as space stations went, though then again who would say they were truly remarkable space stations first place. Uh, Surely there were hundreds of millions of travellers passing and drove through the Aroma Central Station. Dro oh, and Andromeda was a work of art. Performance, painters, composers would all gather in the artificial terraform centric plaza to find an audience. It was the most mesoric of colours, strange sights and sounds. A bizarre horde of intergalactic human culture, like a venturous atop a sea of stars. And I was stuck here, the guy in this grey factory produced pit stop, waiting for my lonesome, for my flight to depart and finish up. For as long as I could remember, space travel out of, out in the boundaries like this, lonely tedious is cramped. Time consuming, stripped down to a status of commute that never seems to end. Space travel as an enterprise was far too expensive, far too dangerous, and for allowing any sort of mega corporation to handle the logistics. I glared down to my ticket. Sure enough, there it was Titan Transport Solutions in loud, bold Greek font. They were one of the biggest players in the field, and they were ones that footed the bill for, I don't know, thousands of space stations just like this one. And let's be briefly clear here, space is big, em enormous, try to wrap your head around it, how infinite spread out is, how empty it is, in all reality, you can't. To get anywhere of consequence in space, one must leapfrog through dozens upon dozens of space stations like these, scattered throughout the galaxy. I've been doing precisely that for a better, better part of an old Earth month. Wow. So rest assured, I was well rehearsed. I know my lines. I could nail down the song and dance in my sleep. I was at any rate getting restless. This isn't a lot to see in space. Tons of tiny, identical white dots painted in tiny grey cockpits that pass through. But that was the p price to pay to get anywhere. And sometimes, if you were lucky, the occasion occasional nebula or debris clouds or band of pirates. I focused my attention on the silver spaceship which lay before me. I've seen many like it before. It was small and terra and single intended for a single occupant. From the outside it looked relatively unremarkable. It was sleek like an arrow. The cockpit stood out. Windscreen warped itself around the front of the vessel, stopping just as the ship's nose began to flow downwards into its underbelly. The interior was sleek, curving wings and it was like an albatross. Attention at Attention, attention, Mabel Station. The intercom crackled. We are now boarding one man shuttle flight 93094B. Shuttle flight 93094B. Passenger of flight 93094B. Please secure your belongings 
and bored immediately. Finally, that was just the notice I was being waiting for. My flight was prepared and ready. I hurried down to the main con of the hangar bay, checked to make sure the shuttle was marked with my flight number and slipped inside. The cabin interior be betrayed its sleek interior. Lights along the walls, ceilings, luminous passages, they were rippling towards the cockpit. The floor was tainted with dark navy blue carpet that travelled up the walls for a few inches. I had made my way towards the cockpit, taking a look around, a curiosity glance revealed two seats confirming the hunch that it was a repurposed vessel. I remember that back in the day every spaceship required human pilots and co-pilots. I guess this was a relic from the old regime. There wasn't much room to move around in the cockpit. Hordes of buttons, dials, flashing lights and other mechanisms were scattered across the control panel. The cockpit was dominated by imminent, enormous windscreens that opened up of the commanding view of, at the moment, precisely nothing. Nothing but space and ocean of stars. It's hard to get excited from such a sight anymore. Within moments, the cockpit was bathed in warm blue light and, computer, and a computerized voice began to speak. New passenger detected, insulating regime sequence. I held up my ticket between my two fingers. Just to make sure the system registered it, a blue light shifted around the small area, then disruptively disappeared. Passenger identification ticket code 0992403. Transition authorized. Spoof, spo, spoofing intelli, intelligent navigator kennel. Analyzing am, amnes complex. Unloading communication syncs code. Sync, Quantum processor are online. Database registered, are online, analyze engines are online, analyze key is online, register hex sequence and island bulk hex, checking firmware for updates, one, two, fireware is completely up to date, checking sequence limited code, one, two, unit awaking authorized, Intelligence Navigator Persona Unlock Navigator 21109CBP Copyright Copyrighted Acela Intergalactic Transport Year 2520 Unit Name Intelligence Navigator Bullpest Then suddenly a voice became softer, more polite, more feminine, intellating one more moment, please. Slowly, slowly, it became more and more human. I heard something click above my head. Glanced up, they noticed a small metallic compartment extracting a multi-lens, most like a camera in the compartment. So that's where it was. Inside was a mechanism wired for light. The lens began to twist, arc like, and extend. They focused on a single point. The pilot's sleep seat to the left. Slowly, a human figure concealed. The form was transmuted, a customer, by a dress of white ivory. For a second, that has been caught on fire. Brilliant red hair flowed from its head to its back and shoulders. Detected, Decluding feminine features emerged as one, ears, a nose, eyes, and a mouth curled into a polite, natural grin. Two long slender arms, stained to two tall, small and slender hands, grasping each other in its front form, its flowing dress. The projection's eyes opened, revealing irises sparking like, them, like they were planets glowing against the backdrop of space. I wonder if this is going to be a romantic one. <laughs> it took all the appearance of a woman. I recognized the image at its work. 
This is this would be a personal navigator assigned to the shuttle, an artificial intelligence designed to serve humanity. Greetings, passenger sir. Are you doing well today? Yeah, yes. I'm doing fine, thank you. It took me a second to ease into my seat, checking all over the belts, harnesses which strap my hard suit. Time to head out again, I suppose. Space travel does not does get exhausting after a while. Oh well, at least the navigator seems nice this time. I wonder what else. <laughs> oh no. Uh, witty comments. AI had become fixed, become a filter, a fixture in space at this point. Before you needed two pilots to operate a vessel like this. The program didn't need food or water. They currently didn't ask for recommendations. It was convenient, cost-cutting, measured from megacorps, which, and the switch was welcomed by consumers with open arms. Wonder what else they can ask for with this. <laughs> I am glad that you are feeling well. I am the Intelligence na Navigator by Bypass, and I will be accompanying you on this voyage. Now, let's take a look at your registration. The Navigator turned its back to me, bringing up an electric window of records, records and data that it was consuming like a magic bar bar barriers. People loved I AI for stuff like this. What about the other stuff? Uh, uh. They brought all the efficiency of a personal planner, calculator and a computer and stuff it all into a pretty looking package with flair and style. By all the stretches of the ma imagination, they were, they were wonderful workers, they worked tirelessly, they were quick thinkers and you could Customize anything about them you, to meet your own needs. In the comments below, put down how you would customize your AI. It seems that this navigator was left with the default setting, though just as well I didn't plan to see much of it from the cabin. The pilot seat had been rerouted to fit its, the hologram generator. I wasn't much use here anyway. Departing from Manabel Station at 0400 in, in the Standard Time. Destination Galactic Grand Central Station in the Alpha Centauri System. Hmm, this is going to be quite the lengthy journey, isn't it? Do not worry, passenger sir. You have my word. I will get you to Grand Central, Grand Central, safe and sound. Some people ended up getting too attached to their AIs. Personally, I tried, tend to keep my distance. At the end of the day, they were basically programs, lines of code assembled to execute tasks behind artificial visage of a living person. Whatever the niche they utterly came from the mouth of some programmer or some psychologic or clink kink or at least from additional constant ages designed for such contact to confirm my presence and leave the piloting to the navigator i nodded in a, f a, s a firm a firm station boy oh, yeah, i won't be able to speak we are launching now from the station. Please remain seated and harness until instructed otherwise. Roger that, loud and clear. It took a few paces to my seat to, in the cabin. Not too far from the personal navigator stationed in the cockpit. I lowered myself into the chair and it was surprisingly flushy. As usual, I treat it threatened my arms through the safety harnesses and then clipped them to the containers together. Leaning back, I turned my head and looked through the window to my right. I heard electric sputtering and whirling of the shuttle, disrupting from the hangar and restraint. My stomach twisted with an 
Tits a patient. Suddenly, the shuttle lowered forward. After a few moments in the throttle, we reached open space and curled our way, cruised our way into out of the station. Ah, uh, and it appears we are off. Currently cruising at a speed of 40,000 kilometers per hour, plotting navigation route now, calculating estimated arrival time. So, passenger sir, do you travel often? Yes, very. But with a navigator as assembly as truly as yours, I assume. I laugh. <laughs> That's pretty clever for a navigator. You came up with that, or your programmers? Programmers? That line, one of my own. Thank you very much. One of your own? Which you thought of using a processor your company built for you. <laughs> Teasing your navigator is against regulations, you know. I ought to have you reported. Oh dear, I do apologize. I thought you said you weren't a novice to travel. I'm not. Well, you seem greenhorn to me. Which of the other navigators have you met? Hmm. Collecting survey data for company, I see. Ah, uh, don't underestimate me, navigator. I wasn't joking around about how much I've travelled. Let's see, there was Venice, Warsaw, Ch Chicago, Oscar, Chanting, Mai. Ah, I get it, I get it. You have your way with a beautiful cast of artificial intelligence. You make it sound so indecent when you put it that way. Oh, is that so, passenger sir? I gave a small polite chuckle out of respect, though it's not as if I practically obliged to the show of the social courtesy of a machine. Or well, it's just a particular personal habit of mine, which I tame from spending time in transit. If you do not mind uh, me asking, hmm? what you do j during once you have arrived at the Alpha Concier, is it better to be something worthwhile after such a long trip? This is how you screen for potential troublemakers. I wasn't planning anything shady now. The navigator lets out a short pr program giggle. Huh. Goodness no, just curious is all. I ask you the same I ask the same question to all my passengers. Just curious? The navigator is just curious? Something of a tradition I have. Hmm? A tradition it has. No kidding. I shrugged. Sightseeing mostly, maybe I'll Try my luck down at the ACB 2? Ah, the planet must be unbelievably hot at this point in its orbit. Oh, it's unbelievably hot all the time. It's like walking into the core of a smelting planet. Ah, true, true. Any business down there? Cobra is if espionage, is it now? Now, sir, I rest assured none of these questions were pre-programmed. I am going to be piloting your shuttle for a time essential. If you haven't noticed, you could afford me a little curiosity about my passengers. And? It's m mostly morbid, morbid curiosity, maybe, that's spilling me there. Maybe I'll scope out some new mining prospects in the area. They say if they found a platinum down there, I could use it and forward a square meal. Most likely I'll end up digging up nickel and iron, but that's fine with me. Shoot for the moon and you'll land among the stars or something like that. Ah, uh, all that for a metal? Pardon me for saying so, passenger sir, but that sounds a little reckless. Oh boy. 
Might be. Me? I'm not bothered by it. It's hard to scrap, but scrap up the credits in this economy. Besides, it's bound to be a pretty view, and who knows, maybe some other learner critics have the same idea I did. Sounds wonderful. Like, sounds like a wonderful adventure. Huh. Huh. You are quite the character, sir. I'll be rooting for you to hit it big. Thank you for your kindly for well wishes. Coming from an AI, I didn't think much of it, but it was nice to hear out loud all the same. You are quite welcome. Now we will be serving the company drink beverage momentarily. Ah, oh, that's great. I had to skip breakfast. The navigator smiled. After the meal, I went ahead and took a short nap. Struggling into the cabin chair, I l slept lightly. But, well, I didn't dream of, dream of anything. I didn't want to, either. After some time, however, I awakened with a start. Sir! Passenger, sir, please come to the cockpit. I bolted upright, started. Something must have gone wrong. Something has, er, uh, gone wrong. I took that as my clue to rush over. As I stepped to the cockpit, warning lights, alerts began to blow. Blasting in the cockpit in Fragen's kinescope of colours, the navigator had set to work. And with that, I'll be leaving it at this cliffhanger. Hope you enjoyed. And how would you customise your AI if you had the choice? Tell me in the comment section. Thank you for watching.